Welcome to Real Scoop Live, a show for pool chemistry enthusiasts where we talk about all the coolest chemistry stuff you never knew you wanted to know. Any chemical advice or suggestions are opinion and utilized at the discretion of each individual pool operator. With that out of the way, let's start the show. Okay, welcome to The Real Scoop Live. This is episode nine in season two. And today the guys are going to talk to you about all things spas and hot tubs. And it's going to be totally spasome. There it is. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. We can That's lead awesome. off with that. Yeah. You know, uh, here in Central Texas today, it's really glorious. And it makes me think that... Um, like at any time I could just break out in song, like specifically the line sleeps tonight, you know, cause that's just a weem away. So anyway, <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. So, so I'll leave it wide open and not tell one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save mine for later. <laughs> for those of you who have followed real scoop live, you know, that um, at, at father's day this year, we did a, a, a dad, dad joke extravaganza and it was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was terribly awesome. But yeah, if you if you like dumb stuff like that, you know, obviously look on our, our YouTube channel because we have that listed on there. So without further ado, Brett, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about, oh no, we're in hot water. Nice. Now, the full disclosure here, Matt and I are both hot tub uh, owners, operators, and enjoyers. Um, aficionados aficionado a hot Maybe. tub aficionado that's yeah. the magazine we're coming out with yeah um so obviously w you never want your hot tub to look like these two pictures up here i mean uh, why would you fill your spa up with with cola or, yeah or or pp pee -pee. um <laughs> well, these pictures were actually provided to us by dealers out in the field that were dealing with issues um that's why we call them dealers yeah. um this uh <laughs> Okay, I'm making up for not having one at the beginning. All right. All right. So the, the one on the top right here, that was actually just gross source water. That's what it came into the tub looking like. Yum, yum. Uh, Matt, do you remember the backstory on Dr. Pepper tub here? Just that it got taken care of, huh? you know, but but yeah, it's, it's well watered and it's yep. from it's from the central central state, a central state. Right. So well, well, um, well. Yeah. Oh, geez. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, you know, the, the thing about it is, is that, uh, for the most part, if you're filling with city water, you're not going to have issues like this. It's, it's when you try to circumvent the city water or, you know, use well water or some other, something else, because we've had times when people have filled their spas and pools up with pond water, lake water, Cisterns. river water, you know, all kinds of stuff. And so when you do that, obviously, you know, you want to check your source water first to see what kind of issues that you're adding into your tub because more than likely if you're trying to circumvent using city water for some reason it's going to cost you more to treat that water to get it up to snuff as it would you know as it would to, to use city water so especially in a spa because you're talking about 350 gallons 400 gallons sometimes five or 600 gallons and when you're talking about that it's like what, what's that going to be five or ten bucks maybe you know, if probably that. not even that much. So, and then um, uh, some other common things you can about. run into uh, typically foam formation um, and then scale formation. And we'll, we'll get a little bit more in depth on those. Um, a few yeah. What's slides. that battleship model on the bottom left? Is that this a battleship thing? model? Yeah. That's, uh, that's the heating element from a typical hot tub. Mm, there uh, you go. It's essentially like a toaster coil. That's how you're heating your hot tub. How about mm. that? How about that? So when it gets uh, toasty, no, never mind. Okay. Oh, there was something there. You had <laughs> it had bones. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> so anyway, ge in general, we're gonna generally we don't like generalities. Uh, <laughs> spas. They're smaller bodies of water, and that causes a couple issues or things you have to keep in mind as you're running it, using it, enjoying it. Uh, reactions happen faster because stuff happens faster in hotter water. Uh, it's way easier to overdose in a hot tub versus a pool. Cause in a pool, it's just much more volume. You add a gallon to a pool, a gallon of anything to a pool, it's going to disperse pretty easily and hopefully won't take levels up too high. You add a gallon to a hot tub, 
you can really throw some some factors out of whack there. Well, if you think of it, like say, you know, most for the most part in the in the country, the average pool size is somewhere between 15 and 20,000 gallons. So so to, to talk about what you're saying, if you add a gallon or something, that's one twenty thousandth. Where in a in a in a spot it's one three hundred and fiftieth, right? So, so that that's where that that can be a big big thing. Mm -hmm. um, but the other part of it too is, and this is something a lot of people don't think about, is that you have a bather load issue, right? And when we talk about bather load, that means how many people are enjoying a body of water at one time. So, what <laughs> at API we've often said. <laughs> So a hot tub is a bath with friends. <laughs> yes. Oh, and we'll, and we'll get to that because we got, we have a couple other slides that we're going to talk to. And again, you know, we, we introduced these slides just to kind of keep us on track, you know, and, and although it doesn't say anywhere on here about dad jokes and spas, you know, we intersperse those because that's, that's the way we are. That's so hopefully you are. get something out of it. But anyway, so if you think about it like this, if you have a 15 by 30, which is a typical backyard pool, um, and you have four people in it. Well, that's that's like nothing, right? But four people in a typical spa, which is about four hundred, uh, about four hundred gallons, four to five hundred gallons, you're talking about the equivalent of having about 120, 125 people in a fifteen by thirty pool. And so, I don't know about you, but if you go around the back to a party, and the pool is filled with one hundred and twenty five people, you're probably not going to say, mm, "Yeah, I want to get in that pool," but when there's four people in a spa, you're like, ah, cannibal, give me some wine. Woohoo. You know? <laughs> and, and it's like, well, I mean, the beta load is that high. So that's why when you're talking about these things, it's easy to overdose. It's you get faster reactions because there's more meat in the soup. You know what I mean? Um, well, I probably shouldn't have said that because wow. that's, that's pretty gross, but that's also why you need higher sanitizer levels, not only because it's hot, but because there's more people, there's more contaminants getting the water at any given time. That's right. Because smaller body water. And off of that, not just contaminants coming off of people, but other stuff that gets into the spa water based on the treatment program you're using. So if you're using trichlor or dichlor, as you're adding that, you're adding cyanuric acid to the water. So that's going to build up a lot more rapidly than it would in a pool because it's a smaller body of water. If you're adding liquid chlorine, you're adding salt to the, to the spa. Every gallon you add has a pound of salt in it. Uh, and anything else that you're adding be it coming off of people's bodies or anything else like that adds to the total dissolved solids present in the water or TDS. Um, TDS is exactly what it sounds like. Total dissolved solids. It's just a measure of gross stuff that wasn't in the water when you first started. Maybe not necessarily gross, but it's in there and you need to deal with it. Um, so, how, so let's, let's do a mind blower right now because you mentioned trichlor and dichlor, right? Yes. Trichlor is, is tablet typically it's tabletized chlorine where dichlor is the granular chlorine. Um, now that's not shock. It's just, you know, granular chlorine, but you might be saying if you're a spa owner, well, I use bromine. Well, the thing about it is, <laughs> and this is, this is the, right. That bromine that you buy nowadays is actually anywhere between 65 and 75% chlorine. So, so when you're using bromine, you are still using chlorine. It's just that the bromine additive to it changes the chlorine to bromine. So, so, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you can still get some of the same contaminants or the same TDS activity by using bromine. It doesn't have to be a chlorine product. It can be a bromine product, can be a biguanide product, can be, you know, whatever. So the dissolved solids is a measurement of how many things that were solid, which are now um, dissolved in the water. And so the higher that gets, the worse it is for everything. The worse it is for the swimmers because, you know, they can get irritated. The worse it is to get the chemical reactions that you need because they have to go through all the stuff that's dissolved in the water. The harder it is to keep the water clear. And then also um, the more apt you are to have to do a water change or filter cleaning or all kinds of stuff. Right. So and that's kind of the thing about draining, too, which we'll talk about here in a couple minutes. But. When you're, when you're draining, one of the ways to tell whether you need to drain, if you're not on a schedule, is to test the dissolved solids. So, And then uh, lastly, but certainly not least important, uh, hot water is more apt to form a scale. Calcium is one of the weird ones where it actually dissolves better in cold water. 
So as you increase the temperature, calcium can come out of solution, adding to potential scale formation on um, equipment, surfaces, uh, anything the water's touching, essentially. And that get, comes into play more with um, aeration of the hot tub or the spa can generally raise the pH, which can then make the water more scale forming. So it's something to be aware of, um, especially when talking about uh, expensive pieces of equipment that you might not want scale forming on. And it gets even worse when the pH is, you know, like you said, when the pH is higher. So when you're, when you're adding products, you got to make sure that you're adding products that don't have a high pH, right? Yep. Or at least that you put stuff in there to combat the high pH. Cause like you said, with, with liquid chlorine, cause a lot of people with the price that chlorine is nowadays and the price that bromine is nowadays, a lot of people are experimenting with other types of chlorine to see what they can use and what they can't use. And, and, and that's fine. I mean, I, I grew up in, in Florida um, with a, which is a liquid chlorine market, but you have to, to remember that liquid chlorine has a very high pH. So when you're adding little bits of that and you couple it with aeration, which also, um, creates a higher pH, then you have a, a spa that typically has the higher pH, which then causes much more issues with all the other stuff that we're talking about, especially calcium. So if you're doing well water, and I said earlier, you test your fill water first, if you have a high calcium in that fill water, then you have to be much more worried about having a high pH and how hot the water is. And might have to adjust how you treat your, your mm -hmm. body of water to prevent mm -hmm. potential issues from coming in. So yeah. Matt, Matt already touched a little bit on source washer, source Sorry. water, source washer, source, source, source water issues. Uh, some of the typical ones are high TDS. So you could start with a high TDS. So it's always good to initially mm -hmm. test your source water to make sure you know what's coming in. Um, and and just, just one thing about that. Remember that salt is a TDS as well. So if you're using a water softener, if you're filling your spa through a water softener, your TDS is going to be artificially high because of the salt and water softener, right? Which yep. isn't bad necessarily, but it's just one of those things that you need to test your fill water so you know what the starting point is for your dissolved solids. And when the dissolved solids gets 2000 higher than that, that's when you really should drain that spa, right? 2000 higher than what your source water is. Um, a couple other things that could potentially come in with source water would be metals. Uh, a lot of common ones, especially with wells, would be uh, iron, zinc, copper, and they can all throw off different colors or cause different color staining on your surfaces. Um, phosphates, a lot of times it's used in water treatment to help protect the lines uh, mm -hmm. so that they don't degrade. Um, if they aren't using things to protect the water treatment, that could be where some of the metals are coming from. It's the leftover pieces of pipe making it all the way through your garden hose into the into your hot tub. How about that? And combined chlorine, uh, it's actually a byproduct, again, from water treatment. So you might actually have combined chlorine in the tub initially, just filling it right from, right from city water. Mm -hmm. So it's something to be aware of. There's different ways you can counter this. Um, there are some pre-filters out there that you can use as you're filling the tub that will help remove some of the contaminants and junk like that out of the water. Um, th th some screw right onto the end of the garden hose. Some look like tube socks that go on the garden hose. Uh, there's different chemicals that you can, you, you can use to actually help pull some of this stuff out. Uh, we make one called Easy Spa Start that will actually take care of three of these different things uh, that we've got on this slide in addition to a couple others that aren't mentioned on the slide. Um, there's different ways. So if you can get the metals and junk that are going to potentially cause problems down the road out of the water initially, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to maintain the spa and keep it on the up and up. Well, just from these pictures, Brett, you can see that these, these two spas in particular are, are both suffering from metals, tannins or organics, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things we didn't put on here is the organics. And typically you wouldn't get organics from city water, but from well water you can. So you have to, you know, think about that, about all the stuff that comes in with the well water. And I'm not, look, I, I'm not giving well water a bunch of crap, so to speak. Um, I use well water to fill my spa, but I also test it first to make sure that, it, you know, that it's, that's good well water. And it is, but, but the thing is that not everyone does that, right? So you might be dealing with either your spa or a customer spa that may look like this. And it's like, well, we, we have a way to fix that. You know, we've been using Stark for 25 years. To, to fix this stuff exactly, including the organics. And uh, is, Matt has filled his spa with interesting things as well. Um, when he had a power issue uh, at the start of last year or this year? 21. 
2021, when they, all that craziness was going on in, in Texas, Matt was pulling sheets of ice and snow off of his roof and melting it in his in the spa. spa because mm-hmm. they're well froze and they didn't have fresh water. So they that's had right. to, they had to get water somewhere. So that's right. Um, there's totally. And, and I got to tell you that the, the, the spa looked beautiful. I, we, we went 11 days without water. And uh, but luckily we had we had uh, electricity. But yeah, so we, if you're dipping water out of the spa in order to use things, you know, certain things in the in the house, uh, you had to refill that water somehow. Yep. So taking the sheets of ice off the roof seemed like a logical idea, and so that's what we did. Worked fine. So worked fine. Matt might and have thank a weird for easy spa. <laughs> Matt might have a weird blend of TDS in his water, but well, I've, I've drained it since then. But yeah, that was in February of 21. We call that snowpocalypse, right? <laughs> Um, one of the other issues that we could, we potentially run into with, um, hot tubs is scale formation. Matt, you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So scale formation is typically from your calcium and there are different types of calcium because calcium, um, is a, you know, likes to hook up with stuff, right? It's, that's just very easy for calcium to hook up with things. So it could hook up with carbonates, could hook up with chlorides, can hook up with phosphates, with sulfates, I mean, all kinds of stuff. So uh, calcium is in the water uh, basically because that's one of the tenets of water is having calcium in it, unless you're using some kind of ionized water or reverse osmosis or something like that, you're going to have calcium in the water. So if you if you think about it like this, um, and I think this is probably where you're going about the iced tea, I mean, just, just kind of giving, giving people an idea of how calcium works. If you put if you put um, you know, hot tea and iced tea, if you put sugar in hot tea and you swirl it around, you can see it kind of go into a tornado and then disappear. Where if you put sugar in iced tea, typically you put it in there and you swirl it around and you see it kind of make a tornado and then fall back down to the, to the bottom of the glass. So that's because most minerals like to dissolve in hot water much easier than in cold water, where with calcium, it's the opposite. If you put calcium in iced tea, then you stir it and it will disappear. But if you put it in hot tea, you can stir it and 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 it, and it won't want to disappear just because of the way it is. So when you have when you have calcium in a spa and you have a spa that's at 100, 102, or you know, maybe even 104, which you don't really want to go higher than that. Remember that the hotter the spa water is, the less time in that spa you want to do at one time, right? So, um, so the hotter it gets, then essentially that makes the calcium want to come out of solution and hook up with something. So the different types of, not contaminants, but minerals and, and, uh, you know, carbons and chlorides and stuff like that. It wants to hook up with that. And when it does that, they want to fall out of solution. And when they do, then that's where you get scale. So typically think about where the hottest part of your spa is. It's going to be inside that heat exchanger right here. That, right that heating element. So, so what happens is that heating element. So what happens is essentially is that, that, that dissolved calcium that's in the water goes through that really high heat, heat, ex, heat exchanger. What'd you call it? Heating element. Heat element. Yeah. And then, and then what happens is the calcium is like, this, it's and it a wants scale to magnet. Out. It's a scale magnet. So it falls out of solution causes problems in there. And then what happens? That means your, your flow slows down because, it, because it's, it's kind of like a clogged artery. You know, the more clogged it is, the less, you know, the more pressure that it has to get through there. So it's the same kind of thing with this. And, and the when, the, sca- when the, when that slows down, then everything else gets all messed up because you don't have enough flow. There's not enough water that can go through the filter at one time. There's not enough, you know, you don't feel the same, uh, gusto from the jets you know that kind of stuff because it's all being slowed down because of uh, issue with scale inside and of that, the that scale actually insulates the heating element as well so the water doesn't have as direct contact with the source of heat as it did before which means your heating element has to run a heck of a lot more to maintain the spa at mm-hmm. the temperature you wanted it at which leads to premature wear and eventually it can break it just because it's so caked up um, that it well, it's doesn't... just like a hot water heater. You yeah. know, they always say that you want to drain your hot water heater twice a year because the, the calcium that comes in, the hardness molecules that come in from fill water don't leave, drop out and they fall to the floor. And so yep. you're essentially paying to heat calcium and not water, right? Or Which well, is calcium just silly. and water. But, <laughs> but you know, then, then that what happens with that is that you end up, you know, if you don't fix it, you end up needing a new, new water heater. It's the same kind of thing with this. Mm. This is a good one. 
this this is the this is the gross one. You know, this is whenever we talk about this, I always think about the Seinfeld reference. If you guys, if any of you watch Seinfeld, you know I'm a little bit older, so not everyone watches Seinfeld or even knows about Seinfeld. But for those that do, there's a there's one of the um, one of the episodes where they have low flow shower heads, and and uh, it makes Kramer have to take a bath, and he comes in and his hair's all flat, and he complains to Jerry. That uh, taking a bath is sitting in a tepid pool of your own filth, right? And and I was talking to these guys about that yesterday because it's kind of a weird reference. But because I've been in water and water chemistry since Seinfeld was putting new episodes out, that's one of those things that just stuck with me. And I can quote that. I mean, that that's what he says verbatim. And, and here's the thing. The spa is kind of the same thing. It's a tepid pool of your own filth. And I know that that's kind of gross. And I don't want to discourage you from being in a spa. But if you think about that, it's not only yours, but it's everyone that gets in that spa with you, right? So so it's not just a tepid pool of your own filth. It's a tepid pool of every bather's filth, potentially, potentially. Mm. So, so when that stuff gets, when there's so much of it in there, then what can happen is you start having issues with scum and with foam because all that is typically from uh, contaminants washing off of your body. Now, what kind of contaminants are we talking about? Now, nah, makeup, deodorant, perfume, perfume stuff, um, any kind of things that 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 have you know lotions, any kind of things that have oil. But also, it's just the natural byproduct of you being you, right? And I'm not saying that you're dirty. What I'm saying is, is that everybody exudes <laughs> body oils, right? Girl, you're greasy. <laughs> so, so it's not just that, but it's also it's toe jam and it's like you know belly yep. button Ugh. stuff and you know all the things that you don't want to think about. That leads to foam. And so if you have foam, that's not good. It's you've not got, one of those things where a, you throw your kids in there and say, hey, make a beard like Santa. You don't want that on. <laughs> I've seen that. It's disgusting. <sighs> I know, go it's, wear a body waste beard. Mm. Oh, it's it's nasty. Now, it's not just that, obviously. It can be all kinds of things. You know, people are using different kinds of soaps. Um, if, they're, if their laundry machine isn't, uh, if their washing machine isn't getting all the residue of the detergent out, you know, that kind of thing. If someone just wants foam and they put some Dawn in there, you know, that kind of thing. That, all that is stuff that can be dissipated rather quickly. But the organic stuff, the stuff that comes off of swimmers um, or oils from, say, like bath bombs or essential oils or things like that, kind of like that picture of the Easter eggs in the top on the top right corner, right? Yeah, a lot of those homemade bath bombs are used are made or put together with, with oils. Uh, the oils can uh, really do a number on the filtration and require you to take your filters out and clean them more frequently and can really add to foam and other stuff like that. So in general, if you've got foam, you've got probably one, two or three other issues going on that's causing the foam. So really run the numbers on your chemistry, check those out first and fix those because if everything's in check and running correctly, you shouldn't have foam. And, uh, there are defoaming products out there. We're not saying they don't work. They'll absolutely help bring the foam down. But uh, Matt and I were joking earlier. It's like putting a Band-Aid on an artery. It might help for a minute, but the underlying problem is still there. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a big It's not going to fix it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So there's, there's there's a little gross foam talk, and we'll, we'll move on because um, <laughs> when in doubt, drain it out. So what's what's a good rule of thumb for when, when you should drain your tub? A lot of people will go off of uh, the time method. So 6 to 12 months, 12 is kind of pushing it. Usually people look at tw twice a year. So every six months, drain the tub, refill, start fresh. And that all depends on how much you're using it. Yeah, if you true. fill up your tub and don't use it but four times in that six-month period, there's nothing wrong with that water. Keep no. it. If it's not doing anything weird to you um, and, and behaving normally, keep it. No, no need to throw water away. Nope. Um, if your stabilizer is too high, and that could happen if you're using a stabilized chlorine like trichlor or dichlor. Uh, remember, stabilizer isn't needed in a hot tub. It doesn't do anything. Um, unless your hot tub is uncovered in direct sunlight all the time, it's not helping at all. But mm -hmm. if you've got a typical uh, standalone backyard hot tub or spa, you're not getting any benefit out of it. So it's, it's unnecessary if your TDS is too high. So it's 
think of that as a measure of the age of the water. Um, if you start at 2,000 parts per million of TDS when you first fire your tub up, 1,500 to 2,000 above that is about when you should think to drain, drain and refill. Nice part about this, most tubs, 350 to 500 gallons, you can drain it, refill it, and have it back up to temperature in a day. So it's not as crazy as if you were draining a pool or having to drain partial pool or anything like that. Um, or another reason you could drain it if it's unresponsive. If you've tried to correct chemical issues in a hot tub, don't keep throwing chemicals at it because water's a heck, a heck of a lot less expensive. And there's probably enough other issues going on in the water that it, it could be time to drain it anyway. So when in doubt, drain it out. Now, what's Side note. This? Side note. Yeah. If you're filling a spa with water that has a 2000 TDS, get another water source. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> right. If, if you can. If you can. Um, so best process to drain and refill. If we're going to go simple, you drain it and refill it. So take the filters out, clean those separately. Don't clean them in the tub. Uh, I, some people have asked about that. It's it, it makes sense in your head, but it doesn't work out well in practice. So set, clean those apart from the tub. Uh, drain and rinse all spa surfaces with fresh water. Drain that water out. Refill it. Start over. Simple as that. So that's if you're not experiencing any issues, you're just doing your regular maintenance or this is the time I need to drain. Neat. So so one of those side notes too uh, with, with that is that I know it sounds kind of silly, but if you can if you can clean your filters and then let them dry, they tend to filter better in the short run than just cleaning them off and putting them back in. So if you can clean those, do those first, let them dry while you're cleaning out the rest of the tub. That's that's gonna that's gonna do you better. Or if you're able to do it, I I actually bought two extra sets of mm -hmm. filters for my tub. So yeah. I will. I, I bought enough so that I <laughs> I can pressure wash them all once a year. <laughs> that's that's um, good. I, I do the same thing. Just alternate. So if it's time to change the cartridges, put the new set in, take the yep. old set out, clean them, let them dry, and then you've got them ready for the next time. So there's no downtime. But Matt, what? Let's talk about if your spa is a nightmare. Uh, let's say you bought a house that had a tub that's been abandoned for two years and it you could stand a cracker up in it because the water's so thick. Um, <laughs> it looks like Guinness. <laughs> what, what do you think? I think you need to purge that sucker. The purge. Good the news. Purge. This is yeah. this is a different kind of purge. No one's going to die. Well, it is right around Halloween. So I know. I'm sure the people have seen the purge recently. That's why we went the, with the red lettering the at the top. Yes, yes. <laughs> So the thing about it is, you know, we talked about oils, we talked about all kinds of scum and organics and everything else. Well, the thing about that is that those don't just hook up to the, the, the shell of the spa. They also stick to everything that the water touches, including the pipes. So when you think that you have your shell or the inside of the spa clean, you don't really know what the pipes are looking like. And if you want to, to ensure that the water stays cleaner longer, then you'd want to clean your pipes too. So how do you do that? Well, you can use an enzyme product that um, specifically Ezyme Pro, because it's made for this kind of thing. But uh, an enzyme product is, is meant to break down those oils. It's a lot like putting enzyme in um, down your sink or down your toilet for septic systems, right? You do that because it breaks down all that stuff. See, I thought about some... I'm not going to say all the grossness. It, it, well, it breaks down all that, all that crap. Yep. <laughs> right. There it is. So anyway. <laughs> yeah. So um, essentially the same th kind of thing happens in your spa, right? If you don't want to think about the stuff that's in there, then you want to purge it because using a purge would actually clean the pipes. So that way everything's clean, not just the shell. So if you do that, you want to first um, put a large, large dose of concentrated enzyme which helps to break down the oils, you circulate the spa and activate all the jets for a short time. Um, some foaming might, you know, it might happen. It's temporary. Um, it's not That's like good. The scum it's actually foaming breaking stuff. the scum it's actually, loose. Right. Right. And, and uh, essentially enzymes break down organics to their base components, which is water and CO2. So you might see, you might see some foaming, but that's just the gassing off of the stuff. You keep your spa at operating temperature and continue circulating overnight as much as you can. The next day, you drain and rinse, um, and drain and rinse all spa surfaces with, with fresh water. And this is the second time that you mentioned to don't forget to check behind the spa pillows. Yep, because that, those can be pretty gross, especially if you haven't checked them out recently. 
So while you're leaving that spa up and running overnight with that monster dose of enzyme in there, it's actually cooking and, and breaking down all the junk that's in the line so that it can come loose. So the next day when you pull that cover back and look at that hot tub, you might be alarmed by the stuff that is now present in the body of the hot tub. That's yeah. fine. You're going to drain it out anyway and get rid of it. It's better to have it in the body of the hot tub so you can remove it rather than it being in the lines because that's mm -hmm. just going to contaminate the fresh water that you put in there anyway. So it might look gross when you when you come back the next day and pull that cover back. So just just fair warning. Uh, check behind the spa pillows because it's, it's a wet environment that doesn't get a lot of sunlight and stuff can grow behind there. So you might need to spend a little extra attention on those. Um, and then refill and start your spa water program. So that's that's kind of the, the nuclear option to clean out the guts of your tub. Um, and it's necessary. It shouldn't be the nuclear know. option, right? If you're, if you're someone that, that worries about this kind of thing, worries about the contaminants, worries about getting in water that isn't as clean as you want it to be or, or you think that it may not be, the purge is something that you can do every time that you drain the spa. Right. Just to make sure. I mean, it's so yes, it's a nuclear option, but no, it's not really a nuclear option. If you get into cover your bases to, to do it, you know, on a regular basis, then, you know, you don't have to worry about the buildup of oils and body oils. And, you know, and if you incorporate a, an enzyme in your normal hot tub use to yeah, it's a lot less to necessary to do to do a purge because you're keeping up with it because it doesn't mm -hmm. build up inside the guts. Yeah. And, and you know, to be frank, if you're using it, you, well, I'm Matt, but if you. Just kidding. If, Can I still be Brett? Yeah. Yeah. And stop calling me Shirley. All right. Um, if you're using an enzyme, that, that's not only going to keep your pipe longer, but it's also going to keep your filters cleaner longer. It's also going to make the water feel nicer longer. It's also going to help some of the stuff that you, when you get in, if you're dirty and there's enough enzyme in there, it would actually help you to get out of the water cleaner. Right. So there, there's a lot of benefits to using an enzyme. Of course, in our kit, our EZ3 kit, we have an enzyme in there that works very well. The way that it was designed is for wastewater treatment and, and spa treatment and pool treatment and all that stuff. So if you want to not worry about a purge and not worry about uh, the organics that people, especially if you have a lot of people that get in there, using something like Ezyme Pro is a, is a great way to, uh, to ensure that you don't have those kind of scum and you know other stuff that you don't want to think about. <laughs> That's all, folks. <laughs> all right. Um, so we did talk about Start. We did talk about Ezyme Pro. We also have Total Care, which helps to eliminate chlorine, uh, combined chlorine. It helps eliminate the smell. It helps eliminate all kinds of things. It makes it very easy. It actually oxidizes out a whole bunch of stuff all at one shot, and it adds oxygen to the water, so the water feels nicer. So if you're interested in that, go to apiwater.com slash easy spa, and we have all that stuff, all that information in there. And uh, we're going to call it an episode. So thank you so much. We hope we put the spa in, in uh, spa care for you today. But um, so subscribe, like, share, share this around if you can, if you want to. We appreciate you. Any kind of comments or anything else, please text us 877-274-7261. Thank you so much. We'll see you in episode 10 next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Can't wait for summertime, for summertime It won't be long when you come back I love you like I do Love you like I do